Hello everyone, Chad Franzen here, and welcome to the Kingdom Finance Show. Today we are going to reveal what you really need to know about the economy, the stock market, and real estate. And we're going to give you action steps to take right now to become a Kingdom Impact Investor. It's time to bring clarity out of chaos. Let's get started. Hey everyone, Chad Franzen. Thanks for joining us on the Kingdom Finance Show today. I'm really glad you're here. Hey, uh, feel free to, if you haven't already, uh, leave us com- a comment on the show, follow us, like us, pass this show along to your friends and family who share your value for taking the teachings of Christ and applying them to your business and finances. Um, hey, today's show. I really, um, I'm going to pivot away from talking about the markets. I really want to speak specifically today to other business professionals who work in the area of finance. And I'm really, the Lord's been pressing this on my heart for some time. And um, I feel like I wanted to record that on today's show. Um, a couple things. Um, Follow us on social media here on the Kingdom Finance Show. You can also uh, follow us on Facebook. You can look up Chad Franzen, Wealth Builders Investments. Um, follow us there, and uh, we'd love to connect with you, wealthbuilders.net. And if you have any questions, I want you to email our team. We've got a great team standing by at Wealth Builders Investments. If you are trying to process through uh, how to bring clarity to your personal finances, investing strategies, how to save money on taxes, how to plan for the future for your business, your kids, your grandchildren, and you want to be a better steward of your money and of your business assets, uh, reach out to our team. We'd love to connect with you, uh, get some free resources into your hand, and come alongside you um, to encourage you and catalyze you into God's call for your life with the talents and the gifts that he's given you. So please email us, info at wealthbuilders.net. We'd love to connect with you and see how we can serve you. All right, so today's show, Rise Up, a call to Christian financial professionals. I feel really strongly about this, that um, finance is uh, the resources, the money, it permeates all spheres of culture. So when we think about the seven mountains of influence, uh, every mountain of society, money goes through, right? Whether that's education or whether that's the fam- family, media, business, government, um, all of the mountains, um, finances weave their way through and have significant impact and influence on that. So what if, what if we rallied men and women who were called to work in the financial industry within the sphere of business? And so these would be financial advisors, financial planners, brokers, accountants, CPAs, all types of attorneys, bankers, realtors, insurance agents, right? I mean, there's all sorts of people, men and women who are in the world of business and they are in charge of financial advising in some form or fashion, right? I mean, your your accountant you rely on, your banker, your insurance agent, uh, certainly people in our sphere where they're certified financial planners, um, financial fiduciaries. This is who I'm really speaking to today. Because the Lord has really impressed it on my heart personally. And so, again, don't check out um, if you're not in that arena. If you're listening to this, I want you to share this podcast with those in your community, family, church, network, who are, you know, work in some area of business that is in the realm of finance. It could be a CFO for a church, right? It could be the CEO of a ministry, and they're in charge of finance. You know, they have they have decisions on how the ministry or the business grows, how resources are deployed. This is who I'm talking to today. So it's a much larger audience than you might think. Um, so again, share this with those individuals. The time is now. We are in the third great awakening. 
And um, m- many have talked about this, uh, m- many uh, leaders in our sphere, Billy Epperhart, Andrew Walmack, and others have talked about we have started this third great awakening and that the ministry of finance is going to be very integral to this third great awakening. So there are going to be stadium revivals. There are going to be uh, reawakenings. And, but there's also going to be this financial element of the wealth of the wicked being transferred to the righteous. And so that is the Word of God, and uh, the Word of God does not return void. So this is happening. This is not something futuristic. It's happening now. Now, what concerns me and what has really motivated me in my spirit as a business owner, as a financial advisor, as someone who wants to be an encourager of people in how to be good stewards of resources and influence in business, is that a very small percentage of us are actually implementing this. There's several large organizations. There's one in particular I know of in the United States of financial professionals, kind of a networking organization. And um, at best, 20% of that network is actually investing, implementing strategies that are what I'm going to call a kingdom framework, a faith-driven investing framework. And that's a Christian professional organization. And I'm guilty of it as well. For many years in working in financial services now for some 22 years, I was ignorant to this, Uh, a complete blind spot that I actually could be doing things in my business that were completely counter to what I believed in, what I prayed for, what I spoke about in my family with my children because of how I was investing. And that was an awakening for me. And yet 15 to 20% at most of financial professionals, again, this is a, this is a broad, really a, a, a broad subset of business, but nonetheless, it's identifiable right? You know people. You could think of five people, <clears throat> maybe 10 within a, a short amount of time that you know, you know what, they need to hear this. They, they love Jesus. They love the Lord. And you know what, they need to step up with how they're managing businesses, finances, and resources within organizations. <clears throat> so now specifically for me, I saw this in the world of financial advising, investment management, stock brokerage world, all those different worlds. They have a lot of different names. Um, And what it sparked in me was needing to find people who had that same burning in their heart, like the, the two on the Emmaus Road, that we have seen the Lord. And we have to now do transactions uh, in the business marketplace with a transformational mindset on that. You know, there's an interesting article in Christianity Today. It was in August of 2022 when this article came out. They did a study, and there were several billion dollars, um, actually trillion dollars, of money in the stock market, bond markets in the U.S. that were controlled by Christians. Christian individuals, Christian organizations, Christian institutions, churches, for-profit, Nonprofit, and only 8% of that money that was controlled by Christian individuals and entities uh, in the stock and bond market was managed in a faith based kingdom framework perspective. And most of that was just, well, we're not going to invest in that company because they support abortion. It, 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 was, it was pretty meager at best. And that is a statistic that has to change. And so I think if more of us who are directly or indirectly through the companies or organizations or ministries we're associated with, if we're connected with the financial decisions, this is our part to play. It is time. And so as part of this Third Great Awakening, I really am wanting to get this message out. I know there are many who share my, my heart on this. And I applaud you. 
uh, and I look up to you for the work you're doing um, to implement kingdom investing, Christ-like ethics to your business, to managing resources, and how you coach and teach people. So I applaud you. We, we need more. And so when you think about the world of Christian entrepreneurs, business owners, financial professionals, um, are we truly making disciples like Jesus said to do in Matthew 28? You know, in the presidential cycle, um, and I think I got this, I forget who came up with the term. I think I heard it from Lance Wall now, but, you know, they had this concept of, of rhinos and, and a rhino in, in a political sense was, was Republicans in name only, R-I-N-O, Republican in name only. And, you know, um, and when you think about that, um, you know, I talk to my kids about things I do in work and I try to relate it to them and often I'll, I'll use animals. And uh, I started thinking about my own work and making disciples in the marketplace. And I thought that's interesting. In the political world, there's, there's rhinos. And Republicans you know, tend to stand for conservative values, family values, uh, more Christian uh, ethics, uh, pro-economy, small government, uh, right? Protect the borders in general, right? Uh, and so a rhino is, is a Republican who runs on that ticket, but not, not so much their, their voting policy of that. So I started thinking about that in, in the, in the business marketplace. And so whether you're a franchise owner, whether you work for a a school or a church or whether you own your own business, like I do, I started thinking, well, what, what about dinosaurs? What about a dino? And uh, what about people? What about me? Am I a disciple in my business, in the people God has entrusted me to advise and counsel and encourage? Or am I a disciple in name only? Dino, D-I-N-O. And um, it really stuck with me that as much as my kids love dinosaurs and things that nature... A dino in this sense is not, this is not positive. Um, I do not, and I know you as listeners, uh, if we've connected or if you've resonated with our message at the Kingdom Finance Show, you, you do not want to be a disciple in name only. So I'm speaking from the marketplace mountain today, but, but even if you're a stay-at-home mom or you're a pastor or you're a student or a retiree, we still have this decision to make. No matter our age, whether you're eight, to 80, to 90, Um, until the Lord brings us home, we have this choice every day of, will I walk as a disciple today? Will I walk as a son or a daughter to the world, to a very crazy world? Will I be salt and light? And that's really the conviction for this show, and um, I'm not going to apologize that it comes across as a little a little heavy. I think it's needed. I mean, the Lord's really been ministering to me on this for for several months, uh, if not longer. And I want to encourage each of you. Um, many of you are ready to be more involved in a discipleship of how we steward our businesses, the gifts, talents, creativity, imagination, and influence that you have around you. I'm speaking in the business sense because that's really the the heart of where I am and where I want to call out people. And I want to connect with you. If you're in a a financial subset of the business marketplace, we want to connect with you at Wealth Builders Investments. So um, send us an email, info at wealthbuilders.net. Connect with us uh, on Facebook or on the website, wealthbuilders.net. I do think, you know, Scripture says, in a multitude of counselors is wisdom. And so the more we can connect, the more we can mutually encourage each other in how we are managing and wielding finances and resources in the marketplace, the stronger we become and we, and we can get unified on this front. So I think it's critical as, as we ponder what's going on in the world and how do we, uh, how do we make a difference, how do we take a stand for our biblical values um, for uh, protecting um, the sanctity of life, right? For, for protecting 
First and Second Amendment rights and biblical marriage. How do we do that? How do we do this in a loving way that we love all people, but we cannot support decisions they make? So we have to do this in a loving manner, but in a way that draws people to Jesus himself, and we're merely a tour guide. I want to share a couple things just as we wrap up on this Rise Up episode of the Kingdom Finance Show. Um, many of you may may know Lance Wall now, a uh, very brilliant speaker and, and thinker, and I've had, had the opportunity to spend some time with him through the years, and uh, always uh, impressed by some of the research he does and things that he, he shares, and um, was with him recently, and he was sharing about this study he had done on the Civil War. And I want to end with this this story and really a, a call to action um, for how we step up into our uh, God-given destiny with, with managing resources in our businesses and with others. And Lance was sharing um, this study that someone had done about the Civil War and what, what did the churches preach during the Civil War? And I thought, that's fascinating. So you have the North and the South. Obviously, it's, it's most of this is not going to be a surprise. But in the South, you know, they were very much under a territorial spirit. Um, they didn't preach about slavery. They didn't talk about the issue. But what the South churches preached about was um, about the tyranny of the big government and about as a state, they needed to be on their own in the sovereignty of the individual state and not being gobbled up by the big government of the North. That was what they preached in the churches in the South during the Civil War. They changed the issue. They didn't talk about slavery, right? And then in the North, um, you know, very much you know, the North is talking about the sin and the judgment coming against the nation because of just the, the, the horrendous nature of slavery. And it became an ideological debate, right? And so, um, clearly so. Um, slavery was terrible. It had to be abolished. And this great awakening with liberation and new freedom, and that was, um, that was the bell that they were ringing in the churches in the North we're talking about, and, and rightfully so. Uh, slavery uh, is abolished. But what about the border states? And the border states, what what were the churches in the border states? Because certain states during the Civil War, part of that state was the South and part of it was the North, right? So you've got border states, Maryland, Delaware, Kentucky, you know, along that line. Um, you've got North and South, you know, in in everyone's backyard, right? So this was the powerful point and what I want to bring home as we talk about how do we rise up in the marketplace, in business, and in finance. Uh, the churches and pastors in these border states, this is what they preached. We are not called to get involved with these divisive politics. The kingdom of God has not called us to be politically engaged. We're called to bring people to Jesus. Well, that's true, but they over-spiritualize it. They, in effect, copped out of the great crisis of their day by saying, we are, we are superior to this controversy. We're not even going to talk about it. Um, and, and that is the point, in that today, uh, much like these border states, they refuse to engage the controversy that was right in their backyard. They just say, you know what? That's not. We don't get involved in that. We're just going to preach the gospel, bring people to the Lord. Um, we're going to stay in the in in the uh, church mountain. We're not going to get into education or politics or business or media. They just stayed in the church mountain, um, and they missed their opportunity. And so, what 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 I learned from Lance, and I agree with this, is that today in 2023, every state. Every business, every church, every for-profit, non-profit, every financial professional, as I'm talking about today, is a border state. There is this habitual nature of Marxism, right? 
in this one world order of uh, of uh, yeah, just stay out of it. Like, let us handle it. Um, you don't need to get involved in this. And it's fascinating because that is the question that I end with today: is are we going to be border states and not talk about and go out? to the public square and and talk about and debate and fight for and defend what is right, how we protect uh, the innocence of our children, how we protect biblical values in our family and and not be forced uh, into doing things that we don't believe in, that, that are not what Jesus taught us to. So I don't want to be a border state. I want to stand with a clarion call, and I want to encourage each of you, and, and specifically those in the business marketplace that, that manage finances and organizations, uh, we have to take a stand. The controversy is at our door, and God has given us every ability, every resource. He gives us wisdom when we need it to make the decisions to steward resources in a way that brings him glory. So we often talk about this as biblically responsible investing, pro-values, kingdom impact. But what I'm trying to get across today is, is just like in the Civil War, we, we have to engage culture where it is and defend what Jesus taught in the Bible and what Scripture says is right. And that is the essence of the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 18, I want to close with this. Uh, It says, The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the call. There is no other call. And so some will see this in our hearts and worship him. Some will doubt. Some will not take a stand. They'll be a border state. But all authority has been given to us, and we have to make disciples of all nations, and that encompasses every sphere of culture, whether it's business, government, education, family, church, media, entertainment. We have to go to all, all the nations, all the spheres of culture. God's put you where you are for a reason, to be salt and light, to have a voice. We have to bring people to know the real Jesus through our businesses, through our organizations. So, again, I want to end this week's show with saying, hey, and I'm saying this to myself, it's time to rise up. Um, we're in the game, but in the game, this is a big game we're in. But every resource we need, uh, God has provided, whether we see it now or we just sense it in our spirit. So, um Again, I really feel strongly about this. This is really a word the Lord has given me. And as we think about kingdom finance, stewarding assets, resources, the access you have in your sphere of influence, um, it's an amazing opportunity. We, we get to do this. It's a gift from the Lord. So bless you all. Thanks for joining us on Rise Up this week. Please share this with friends and family that you think could benefit from being encouraged by this message. Again, I really feel it for people who are managing finances and resources in organizations, and especially if you know financial advisors, CPAs, attorneys, all those types of people, that that's kind of the world we operate in. We would love to connect with them if they share a similar vision and heart for this send them this episode and have them reach out to us. We would love to connect with them and encourage them in what God has called them to do in business. Hey, thanks so much for being here. Again, connect with us. Um, subscribe to the podcast. Find us on Facebook. This is Chad Franzen, and uh, we will see you next time on the Kingdom Finance Show. 
Thank you so much for joining me today on the Kingdom Finance Show. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review. It really helps to get the word out. For more resources on becoming a kingdom investor and to connect with us directly, visit our website at wealthbuilders.net. That's wealthbuilders.net. We'll see you next time on the Kingdom Finance Show. The content provided is for educational purposes only. We encourage you to seek personalized investment advice from your financial professional. For all tax and legal advice, please consult your CPA or attorney. Investment advisory services are offered through Authentic Counsel, a registered investment advisor. Securities are offered through Cabin Securities, a registered broker-dealer. The content of this podcast does not constitute an offer of securities. Offerings can only be made through an offering memorandum, and you should carefully examine risk factors and other information contained in the memorandum.